I'm currently 25 years old, although at the time of the story, I was 20. I live in Newark, Delaware, a usually small and quiet town that is until college season rolls around in the fall and spring. Newark is home to the University of Delaware, which is a large and widely respected school in the U.S. It also has a reputation for being a big party school, so when the college kids arrive, things get a lot more lively. Anyway, I work as a bicycle delivery guy at Jimmy John's a job I still work at as of me telling this story. This event took place during a Tuesday or Wednesday night in the spring, either late April or early May I can't remember exactly. It was my typical 7 p.m. to 2 a.m. shift. The Jimmy John's I work at is open until 2 on weekdays and 3 on weekends. This means we're one of the few places still open in town aside from the bars, so a lot of drunk college kids storm the place wanting to order. Needless to say, it gets pretty hectic. Deliveries would pop up like crazy, which did get very annoying, but it meant a lot of tips, so I always put up with it. This was my last night working the shift and just as 2 a.m. was about to roll around, one last delivery came in, and I was next in line to take it. This annoyed me, as I just wanted to end my shift and go home to get some sleep. I sucked it up and took the delivery since I didn't have a choice. I knew the street by heart and knew where to go immediately. I should mention that the reason we do bicycle deliveries is that the roads tend to be busy sometimes during college season, so using bicycles sometimes allows us to do deliveries faster. I rode my bike as fast as I could to the house in less than 10 minutes. I knocked on the door loudly, but there was no answer. I knocked again, louder this time, still nothing. I became a little pissed when I remembered if someone didn't come out, I'd have to take the order back to the store, meaning this delivery would seriously be wasting my time. I called the number on the receipt, but no one answered. I was getting ready to call the store when I first heard it, rustling sounds coming from some bushes directly across the street from me. I figured it was probably the wind but decided to look anyway. When I did, I felt my stomach drop as a strong sense of dread flowed through me. I saw the dark figure of a person directly across the street from me, in someone's yard, crouched behind a few bushes. Even though I couldn't make out any facial features, I knew that he or rather, I figured it was a he was looking right at me. My heart was racing, but it didn't seem like he noticed that I noticed him. I pretended to not notice him and knocked loudly on the door again. Still, there was no answer. I began to grow more and more panicked, wondering whether or not this could be a trap. I did a quick glance, and the person was still crouched behind the bushes, watching me. I just wanted to get the hell out of there, so I decided to just continuously knock on the door as loud as possible until someone answered. It felt like hours that I was knocking, but eventually, someone stumbled out from one of the rooms and sluggishly answered the door, sounding pissed. When I told him about the order, he told me that he didn't order, so it was probably his roommate instead. To my misfortune, the person who actually ordered was upstairs in his room, passed out drunk. How he could have passed out so quickly after he ordered is still beyond me. The guy went upstairs to try and get him. Not even a minute after he went upstairs, I suddenly heard more rustling and did a quick glance back. When I did, I noticed the man had moved a little closer, probably to get a better view of me. I could tell he was still watching me. My fear intensified. I almost wanted to come inside to get away from the man watching me, but I figured he'd steal my bike, meaning I couldn't do my job anymore. Plus, I didn't know if this person was armed and if he would actually try something if I went inside, which would put the two of them in harm's way. Luckily, he was only upstairs for a minute. He said his roommate's door was locked and that he wouldn't answer the door when he knocked. At this point, I really wanted to get out of there, 
so I told him he could sign for his roommate's order. He hesitated at first since there wasn't a tip charged to the order, but a tip was the last thing I was thinking about at this point. I insisted over and over, and eventually, he signed for his roommate. I handed it to him and gave him a quick thank you. When he shut the door, I hurried to my bike and hopped on, ready to get the hell out of there. But just as I put the kickstand up, I heard the man suddenly lunge out from behind the bushes. I quickly turned to my left and saw that the man was now dashing toward me. I was able to see he was wearing what looked like jeans, boots, and a black hoodie with the hood over his head, and what I think was some sort of mask on his face, as I could only see his eyes. Although I'm not 100% on this, it looked like he was holding a blade in one of his hands. I knew I had to act quickly. I couldn't make a U-turn because he'd probably catch me before I could get away. To make matters worse, all the surrounding streets led to dead ends. My only chance was to head to a bike trail that was nearby. Even though it wasn't lit up and I didn't have a light on my bike, I knew it would be my only chance. I pedaled faster than I ever had before onto the pitch black trail and rode it, all while looking out for shadows and listening for footsteps. Luckily, the trail wasn't long, and I knew it by heart. Still, I was extremely paranoid by this point and got startled whenever I heard any noise at all. I didn't see the man while I was on the trail, however, and I made it back to the store safely. I was hyperventilating like crazy as I tried to wrap my head around what the hell just happened. I didn't tell my boss or co-workers, nor did I call the police since I didn't get a good look at the man. I simply got my stuff and clocked out and went to my car, putting my bike in the trunk, so thankful I decided to drive that night. I made it home safe without anyone following me, and that was that. I never saw the man again. I don't know what he wanted whether he wanted to rob me or worse. I haven't worked another midnight shift since then, and now I carry nunchucks on me whenever I do any kind of night shift. New York isn't known for being a dangerous town, so the fact that this happened here truly showed me that anything can happen anywhere to anyone at any time, no matter how safe or dangerous the area may be. I had some spare time this night, and having chugged a few coffees earlier in the day, I figured I'd use this energy to go out and make some money. I was delivering for DoorDash, cruising on the highway to my next delivery. It was super late the roads were empty and the night was very peaceful, basically every delivery driver's dream. On my way there, though, my phone started buzzing. It was the customer calling me, but before I had a chance to answer it, they hung up. Since it only rang for a couple of seconds, I thought it must have been an accident. But in case it was not, I redialed their number. It rang for a while, but they didn't answer. I shook my head and blew it off, not thinking about it for the rest of the drive. I got off the highway and drove into the neighborhood. It was a very regular street with average houses. When I got up to the house my delivery was for, I parked right in the driveway and started walking up to their porch. As I was setting down the bag, I saw that the front door was cracked open. I didn't know if it was meant for me or not, so I just lightly knocked on the door and called out that I was dropping off their food. As soon as I did, I heard a somewhat disturbing sound come from down the hallway. It was a muffled thump that almost mimicked my knocking, like someone was banging on a door. A bit shaken, I opened the front door wider and called out again. I wasn't sure what to say, so I just repeated myself, saying that I was delivering their food. A few quiet moments went by, then I heard a door open from the back of the house, and a guy came around the corner. He looked distressed and bothered, but I couldn't tell if it was because of me or something else. The guy walked down the hall and right up to the doorway I was in, 
not saying a word as he started to reach for the bag. But that's when I heard those thumps again from down the hallway. I looked past him in confusion as he turned and looked as well, then quickly turned back and looked at me, recognizing that I heard it too. Is everything okay? I asked carefully. The sound echoed through the walls again as the man just kind of stared at me, as if he were trying to think of what to do. Why don't you bring the food inside for me, he said, almost in a demanding tone. Nervously, I picked up the bag but quickly realized how terrible of an idea this was. I felt threatened, like I had to follow him, but I also had a feeling that if I did, I wouldn't be making it out of there. In my hesitation, the guy's face showed he was even more bothered, angry even. He then reached out and grabbed the food right from my hands, then slammed the door in my face. Stunned, I stood there and listened as his footsteps went down the hallway and the thumping stopped. I couldn't do anything else at this point, so I hurried off the porch and got back to my car. I ended my DoorDash shift after that one and ended up reporting the really disturbing scenario to the police. I think what ended up making me report it was that the man tried to get me to go inside his house. If not for that, I may have not felt there was enough evidence to do anything. Unfortunately, though, police informed me hours later that the man denied that anyone else was there and declined their request to search his home. At that point, there was nothing left to do other than speculate. I believe there was something truly horrible going on, and he was possibly ready to do the same to me, but I don't think we'll ever know for sure. It was supposed to be one of, if not the last, delivery of the night for me. I was working at this pizzeria called Leonardo's. One of my bosses, John, was on the night shift with me. He would choose who does what delivery. We got an order for a couple of regular pizzas. He gave me a piece of paper with the address on it and the person's phone number. This was in 2009. I didn't have a cell phone with GPS, just a barebones flip phone. I also didn't have one of those Garmin GPS devices. I still had to use an old-school book of maps to find my way around when doing deliveries. The name of the street for this house I was delivering to was something along the lines of Willows Road. I can't remember the house number nor do I remember the name given for the order, but I do remember having the hardest time finding the place. It was in this really rural town with nothing but woods, farmland, and more woods. The lack of street lights also didn't help. I had to pull over a few times and turn on the interior lights as I checked the map again. It was a very stress-inducing situation. Whenever I couldn't find a house, I was on a very quiet, dark, and confusing road when I decided to just call the number on the paper my boss gave me. The phone rang a bunch of times. It seemed that there was no answering machine set up. It had to have rung about 10 times before someone picked up. I waited for someone to say hello. When no one did, I said it, and then a voice on the other end said it back. It was a low, deep, yet soft voice. I said, this is the pizza guy. I'm just having a hard time finding your place. He explained that his driveway was easy to miss and looked like just a dirt trail. He talked in a very slow, monotone voice as he described the surroundings of his driveway to help me find it, and eventually, I did. I turned my car onto this pretty narrow dirt path. It was definitely easy to miss. It took about 30 seconds of me driving slowly and carefully up it until I saw this small one-story house come into view. There was a faint orange glow from inside the house that could be seen through one of the windows. I parked my car next to the only other vehicle in sight, this beat-up pickup truck. I grabbed the two pizzas from the passenger seat and walked to the front door of the house. I looked for a doorbell but couldn't find one, 
so I knocked on the door. I heard muffled music from inside the house, then I heard footsteps approaching the door. After maybe 10 seconds, the door cracked open, and I saw a quarter of someone's face. I literally could just see one of their eyes peeking out at me. I nervously said, hey, you ordered the pizza, right? The guy said, oh yes, the pizza. I recognized the voice from the phone call before. There was a weird pause. I didn't know what to say except for, do you have the cash? He said yes and let me go get it. He walked away from the door and I heard his footsteps move to another room. There was super old music from the 1930s playing, making the setting just extra creepy and weird. If it weren't creepy enough already, the door started slowly inching open on its own, revealing more and more of this dimly lit room. Everything about the interior of this place seemed super old. There were metal sheets on the floor, presumably covering holes in the floor. The couch looked like it was from a different century. Hell, all the furniture did and the music was coming from a vintage-looking record player, one of those with the big horn-like thing on top. That's all I could see at first from just sneaking a nosy peek inside the place, but what really was off-putting was the smell. It smelled like death in there. I waited respectfully for the guy to come back with the money from wherever he went. When enough time passed that I felt like it was getting weird, I knocked on the open door, took a peek inside, and said, Sir. The man's voice came from another room, saying, Yes. Would you mind coming into the kitchen, please? My co-workers and bosses always advised against stepping into anyone's house if you didn't have to. That advice seemed especially relevant for this circumstance. I heard what the man said, but I still responded, can you repeat that? He repeated, can you come to the kitchen, please? I stepped inside and I honestly felt like my feet were going to crash through the floor. The place was so old that the floor actually caved in a bit as I stepped around. The house was very linear. I looked to the right and saw the entrance to the kitchen where his voice was coming from. I looked to the left, and there was a narrow hallway with a bunch of doors on the right side. At the end of the hallway, there was this guy with his back to me, slowly dancing in the creepiest way imaginable. The man was feeling himself, I don't mean he felt confident, I mean he was literally feeling his body as he moved in this really off-putting way. In any other circumstance, I would have laughed, but I was downright disturbed by the kind of house I had just walked into. I turned away and looked toward the kitchen, still holding these two pizza boxes. I took a few steps toward the kitchen before I even noticed the person peering around the edge of the wall separating the kitchen from the living room. It was that man's face again, still only showing like a quarter of his face, just one of his eyes creepily peering at me. The only thoughts I had in this moment were, what the hell, and, should I just leave? Leave, I repeated what I said at the front door moments ago, asking him again if he had the cash. The man didn't respond. He started to just giggle or I don't even know what I'd call it because the laugh was so deep and pitchy, but it was so subtle and soft. Then he called out, Randall, in a startlingly loud voice, much louder and more commanding in tone than his previous soft-spoken monotone voice. I was at my limit of how much weirdness I could take. I turned around and started walking back to the front door. As I took a look down the hallway, as I was about to walk outside, I noticed that the guy who was dancing seconds ago was now simply just standing there, looking back at me. I left through the front door and closed it behind me. I hurried back to the car, for some reason still holding the pizzas. I threw the pizza boxes in the passenger seat and got back in the car as quickly as possible. As I was backing my car up to clear the pickup truck next to it so that I could do a three-point turn, I looked back at the house. The door was fully open again. 
My heart started beating even quicker at the thought that one of them was outside my car, about to attempt to open one of the doors. Maybe they were, and I'll never know, but I managed to get my car down that dirt driveway and back onto the road. I had to return to the pizzeria. I called John to let him know what happened. He wasn't mad at me. When I got back to the pizzeria, everyone left. When I told them what happened, I can honestly see how it sounds like a funny situation when explaining it to others, but it was not funny in the moment. Whatever was going on in that house wasn't normal, and I don't think they had any intentions of buying pizza. I've had multiple dreams where I would see that man's face just peeking around from behind a wall. After that, I didn't enter anyone's houses or apartments while doing deliveries. Thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to watch the latest videos.